Wherever you go, Tara Mosheo. Whatever you do, Tara Mosheo. Yo, 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 your time don't they come. Yo, 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 your beans don't they dumb. You think say God in order for your side. And you want to find another. Okay, you are you are welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is the Odua Investment Company Limited Business Interactive Session, and um, depending on where you are joining us, we'd just like you to indicate in the chat box where you are logging in from: Lagos, Nigeria, Abuja, FCT. London, UK, wherever, you're welcome. You're most welcome. We have about two hours together. And in that time, we will be looking at a number of things on our agenda. My name is Dikwa Deshida, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Red and Zill Marketing Communications. We're going to be having a welcome and introduction by the GMD and Group Executive Officer, Chief Executive Officer of Odua Investment Company Limited, Mr. Adewale Raji, who will be coming up shortly. After which, the chairman, the group chairman of Odua Investment Company Limited, Dr. Shegon Ainal, will be giving the opening remarks. Then, Mr. Joseph Tegbe of 
KPMG, his senior partner, will be setting the tone with a 15 minute presentation. We will take a survey, a very quick survey, just to give uh, a quick overview or help in our understanding of what we know about Ojoa. After that, After that the chairman, chairman, the group chairman, Dr. Shagwana, will come back to give another, um, lead another session, which is called, it's a new dawn for business. Take another survey, very quick survey. After which we'll then have a question and answer session and concluding remarks by the chairman, group chairman, Dr. Shagwana, and vote of thanks by the group CEO, Mr. Dewale Raji. We know that we're, um, we have a lot of dignitaries present, so we would um, stand on the protocol to just say, welcome everyone. Thank you very much for taking time out of your very busy, busy, busy schedule to be here. We are really excited to have you and we'll make sure that this time is worth your while. We have representing the Lagos State Governor, His Excellency, Babajide Songwulu, Mrs. Shalakwe Hamid, Hamon, sorry, who is the SASDG, um, who's the SASDG and investment. And later on in the event, we'll be having her give a few um, remarks. So ladies and gentlemen, Group Managing Director, Mr. Dewale Raji, who would be given the welcome and introduction. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Good, good morning, everybody. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Very high network individuals, captains of industry very distinguished persons as far as business and enterprise is concerned across the length and breadth of Nigeria. I welcome you most sincerely to this first of Odua Investment Company Limited business seminar intended to update the business community within Nigeria and beyond about the potential and prospects of this great institution that will be 45 years old come October 2021. It's my pleasure this morning on behalf of the very, very distinguished board of Odua Investment, led by Dr. Shegwainer, to welcome each and every one of you to this important event as part of Odua breaking into the business community and occupying its rightful place accordingly. Uh, on behalf of the board, the management and staff of Odua Investment, I welcome all of you. And I will equally say on behalf of our shareholders, as you know, uh, I welcome all of you. Um, in the course of my welcoming and introducing, I will be talking and introducing members of the board of Odua Investment. Now, Odua Investment, which will be 45 years this year, has in its portfolio a lot of companies that are older than it. Founded in 1976, but the real foundation of this organization, of this organization, is in the defunct Western Nigerian Development Corporation, WNDC. And when we call out that name, what quickly comes to our mind are uh, the creation of the Keja Industrial Estate, 
uh, which you know literally was the premier industrial state in Nigeria that housed quite a lot of business entities that could that Western Nigerian Development Corporation also had equity participation. The likes of the Guinness, the Welcomes of this world, which is SKG Pharma now, Nigerian Textile Mill, which is Dangote, Vitafoam, Tower Aluminium, Galvanizing Industries, Nigeria. Quite a lot of companies that are located within the Ikoja Industrial State, WNDC brought them on board and also took equity. And most of these equities are what got inherited by Odua when it was created in 1976. You also recall WNDC to be the creator of Western Nigeria Marketing Board, what is shorting as Wema Board today also, which has a lot of prime properties, both industrial, commercial, residential, as well as retail as we speak today. As you all probably know, the ownership of Odua Investment Company Limited is by the six Southwest states of Nigeria, represented by the chief executive of those states, Engineer Sheyi Makinde for your Governor Akere Dolu of Ondo, Prince Dapo Abiodun of Ogun State, Mr. Gwe Egeoyetola of Oshun State, Dr. Kara Defiemi of Ekiti State, and Governor Babajide Sonwolu of Lagos State. Each of these states own equal equity and percentage in Odua Investment Company Limited, 16.67% each that they own. And the mandate from shareholders is very crispy and straightforward. The business is charged to be the engine room for the economic development of the southwest of Nigeria. By implication, in times of investment, the frontiers will go beyond the geography of the southwest, but essentially the base for the organization is the, is the southwest. Distinguished members on this call, uh, permit me to introduce the 11 member board of Odua Investment that was constituted by the shareholders in May 2020. It's a good blend of six non-executive directors, two independent directors, and three executive directors. Leading the board is Dr. Shegwa Eno, OFR, the chairman of the board, uh, myself as the group managing director. Other members of the board are Chief Shegun Ojo, a non-executive director, or Tumba Mrs. Adebola Oshibogun, independent director, Mr. Shini Adio, SAN, non-executive director, Mrs. Polusho Olanio, OON, independent director, Dr. Tola Kasali, non-executive director, Otumba Bimbola Ashiru, non-executive director, Mr. Shegun Olujobi, non-executive director, Ms. Adekemi Ajayi, our executive director and our group chief financial officer. Mr. Olubola Omak George. In terms of experience, gender, and any other parameter that you might want to use. And this board has been making a lot of waves since its creation just over a year ago. On this note, I will say I've introduced the board members here present, and I'll be yielding the floor to the anchor to go on to the next item on the agenda Thank you, so, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, who are on this, this webinar, webinar today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dewale Raji. And 
that was quite a befitting introduction. Thank you very much also for all the others who are on board. We see quite a number of people from Togo, Lagos, Washington, DC, London, Nigeria, Ibadan, you know, thank you very much. You're all very much. Group chairman, Dr. Shegun Aino, to give um, his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dipo. <clears throat> And thank you very much, uh, Wale Raji, the group managing director. Mm -hmm. Excellent introductions. So on behalf of the board of uh, Ugo Investment Limited and the board of the subsidiary companies, most of whom are all on this call today, I want to warmly welcome you all to this meeting business thought leader interactive session. You are all eminent thought leaders, and you have been carefully selected and chosen and invited to participate in recognition of your relevance as an important state stakeholder. This session is designed to provide updates on the exciting and intensive transformation going on in Nudua Investment Company Limited and its subsidiary businesses, as well as our plans for the future. It is also designed to exchange ideas and advance your thoughts to enrich the transformation journey. And lastly, but more importantly, we expect to excite participants with business and partnership opportunities that will enhance win-win outcomes. We want to strengthen existing partnerships and of course create new ones. And speaking of new partnership, we have actually had some sectoral engagement in recent times, one of which was on agriculture, where we had eminent leaders uh, uh, from you know, the uh, main agricultural organizations in Nigeria and Africa, talking about uh, PARA Forum for Ag Ag Agri uh, Research in Africa, a number of OE, OE uh, a number of AU, and uh, then IITA, IAR and T. Uh, uh, Friesland uh, uh, Campino in terms of dairy businesses, and it was a really, really very, very great as that, and that's because of our incursion into the agri sector. We've also had with international organizations, specifically the IFC, Marina Finance Corporations, where IFC leaders from about seven countries in Africa participated in that program, all of which are designed to let our uh, partners and new partners know exactly what we are doing and how we want to do business with them. As you are very much aware, the Udua Investment Company Limited has had its shared history since its establishment in 1976 and has remained resilient and still standing in spite of the vicissitudes of business over the decades, including the governance and perception issues it has had to contend with. With the clear vision, commitment, and the extreme support of the shareholder representatives, who are the six governors of the six Southwest states, a lot of fundamental and foundational changes have taken place in the last 14 months. And in the course of this uh, program, we'll be informed about the details of those. And this I aimed at repositioning the institution. And to the glory of God, we have started seeing the, uh, the results. So I want to clearly thank the six governors, uh, the current set of governors of leaders in the, in the states of uh, the, the six states of the, of the Southwest, the owner states, for their great sense of leadership, patriotism, and the desire to make this organization fulfill its full potential in a sustainable manner. I also want to express our appreciation to some senior citizens, leaders of thoughts, business and professional leaders who had over the years and in recent times, you know, been putting pressure on shareholders, supporting the shareholders, supporting the board, and working behind the scene to make sure that we are where we are today. A number of them are on this call, but I would not want to mention their names. So what we thank you all for making sure, for being the actors of these changes that are taking place for which we are all uh, happy. Uh, that, that, that we are seeing what is happening today. Um, Odua Investment also, of course, have been supported on um, this journey in the last few years 
uh, by KPMG, uh, that global consulting firm. And uh, I'm happy today that uh, a senior partner in KPMG, Mr. Johnson Tegbe, is here with us, who will be sharing with you the experience of the journey of working with Tudua so far. Uh, they have been very, very valuable partner to us. And we, particularly the current board of directors, express appreciation for their dedication, commitment, and, 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 being re and, and the resolution they have had in terms of uh, making sure that we get to the stage that we are in today. So I want to end by thanking you all again for being here and to welcome you. Please enjoy the session. It's going to be very, very uh, uh, interesting. And I look forward to your contribution. As I've been mentioned, uh, because of, we don't want to, uh, to, to spend too much time, only people will be giving the opportunity to speak uh, by voice. But please, as we go on, put your thoughts in the chat box and the questions, recommendations, suggestions, and we don't claim to know it all. We want to learn from you. We want to know where the opportunities are. We want to know how we can partner with you. We want to know how we can do business together so that we can all achieve our mutual uh, uh, objectives. So I uh, thank you very, very much indeed, and welcome to this webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for um, your welcome address and the opening remarks. At this point, we're going to move very quickly into um, the next presentation, which is by Mr. Joseph Tegweb, KPMG's senior partner. But I'll just very, very quickly, in a few seconds, like to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Ade Adeyemi, Equos, all the way from Nome. And also Mr. Ade Adeola, Standard Chartered London. Mr. Kyle De Falo, Chairman, Greenwich Merchant Bank and also Professor Adenike Ademo of the University of Badon. Thank you very much. Just so that you know, in case you have a question, please post it in the Q&A box. In the Q&A box, it's right beneath your screen. Put your questions there. But for general uh, discussions, that can go into the chat box. So right now, without further ado, I'd like to invite Mr. Joseph Tegbert to take a presentation on setting the tone. Um, um, good, good morning, good morning, the chairman, uh, members of board of Fudua, uh, very distinguished uh, captains of industry. Uh, let me just stand on existing protocol. Uh, what I'll be covering in the next uh, 15 minutes, thereabout, uh, will be the journey so far from an independent perspective, uh, working with Odua over the last couple of years. I know the question on a lot of people's mind today will be, why Odua? Uh, what has changed or what is changing? In 15 minutes, I will try and illustrate some of the landmark changes and the ongoing transformation initiatives uh, that is ongoing in Odua. The transformation journey of Odua commenced in 2012 and has gone through different waves and stages. Uh, in 2012, KPMG was commissioned uh, by the Southwest governors to carry out a net check and state of business review of Odua. Uh, we did that checking all the investments and all the portfolios in Odua. I will cover some of the findings in the next slide. However, in 2015, the first wave of business transformation then started, where a new strategy and strategic imperatives were defined for Odua. Uh, the strategy documents and the strategic plan covered 2015 to 2019. The implementation was faced with a couple of challenges, which I'll cover in the next few slides. However, a major transformation then recommenced in 2020 with a lot more political will backing that transformation with strategy revalidation being done and the need to sweat, revive the assets also became uh, the, 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 the focal point. 
how it all began in 2012, like I said, we reviewed the business model of Odua. Looking at all the industries, the strategies, the products and services, the alliances and customers that Odua was actually operating and the entire ecosystem of Odua. We looked at the operating model of Odua, looking at the corporate governance of Odua. We also looked at the organization structure. We looked at the people, cooperations, technology. More importantly, extreme the challenges of the corporate governance with the right, with the involvement of government and the hindrances that the involvement of government was, you know, causing the, the growth. We also look at the financial performance of Odua. The strategic health was aimed at repositioning Odua for optimal performance. That was in 2012, in 2015. But in businesses that we needed to discontinue, divest, and the businesses would need to reinvest or reposition for growth. There were lots of moribund businesses. Half of what the businesses would do was operating in actually moribund. And they were just court centers where money was going in and nothing was coming out of them. So we did a mapping and we, pre we presented to the governors and we jointly, the governors took a decision to discontinue some of the businesses. They decided to divest some of the businesses ensuring that the focus actually shift from operating businesses, but having alliances with technical partners who can actually operate better than Odua could do. And then they decided what other businesses needed to be, do we need to reinvest in. Clearly, at that particular point in time, a lot of significant issues were revealed to us. That the business strategic direction was very clear. There was absence of investment management framework to even guide investments that we're going into. We were still planning to invest in moribund businesses, businesses that have moved on and became, you know, actually uh, saturated. A lot of high numbers of unprofitable, low profit subsidiaries. And it was interesting to find out that associate company where we had investments was producing almost like 80% of the profitability of the entire group. There were a lot of unrealized alliance initiatives at that particular point in time. Like I mentioned earlier on, the organization structure was quite suboptimal. I would say at that particular point in time, the governance structure was poor. Uh, we had board, of, board members that was, you know, that joined the board, and some of them didn't spend more than six months or one year, why some spend five years, depending on the tenor of the governor that actually appointed them to the board. So if there's a change in the governor, the name governor just removes the board member, whether he's performing or not performing. There were absence of KPIs and performance management framework. The workforce was aging. Uh, the, Financial performance also revealed inadequate financial ratios. Return on assets were poor, return on equity was poor, low cash generation from operations. And it was more of the business was being run by sale of shares to actually fund the business. Low asset utilization, and OPEX was growing, you know, at an average of 9% year on year. Staff cost was a major driving factor. So those are the myriad of issues that the business was faced. What we, did we then do? After the strategic health, it was imperative for us to redefine the aspirations of OICL. The vision was redefined for Dua to be the leading Nigerian conglomerate choosing sectors delivering above par performance in growth and profitability. Locally, they were benchmarked against Udua, against Dangote Group, against Sematec, and other Temasek, and other international conglomerates, where government also had some level of participation. The mission was to deliver maximum returns to our stakeholders through qualitative and strategic management towards enhancing the heritage of the fund and finance. There were lovely vision and mission statements. Core values were also redefined. Integrity, creativity, passion, excellence, and teamwork. 
but they were anchored on six strategic pillars that the group revenue needed to grow by 2019 to 20 billion. That we needed to transition with OICL into a lean operating company. That was a mix, mixed up. Whether Odua was actually an operating company or whether it's an old investment holding company. And then we also agreed to achieve a PBT margin of at least 15% by 2019. Also agreed to strengthen OICL oversight over the investing companies. Board members were assigned to the group and assigned to investing companies, to subsidiaries, without any synergy, without any link, and without any reporting metrics. We also agreed to sweat the group's portfolio of assets to, to achieve 12% return on assets by 2019. The last pillar was to build a highly motivated workforce to deliver on the company's goals and objectives. The, the staff of Odua at that time was pseudo servants, and there were no clear KPIs to monitor their performance. Now, if I look at the shading of those six strategic pillars, we made traction with respect to PBT margin. Odua made traction with respect to transitioning to lean operating holding company structure. They made traction with respect to strengthening Odua's oversight. Weak progress was made with respect to growing the revenue. In terms of sweating the portfolio of assets and in terms of building, you know, world-class workforce, we didn't make much progress. It was a big battle in that period and the abattros was simple. The non-implementation of the corporate governance structure recommendations actually resulted in board infighting, poor implementation of the 2015 strategic plan. It was, the, the company was actually plagued with so much infighting that there was no progress made in significant areas. The major achievement at that particular point in time, I said, a PBT growth and the fact that Lagos State was brought on board as a new investor. As at that time, it was one of the other five states that were investing states, uh, Lagos State joined on board. The, the, the board infighting and the prevalence of governors on the board governance structure needed to be addressed. And in 2020, another meeting was held with the governors in which we feedback, candid feedback was given to them, not only by KPMG, also by notable um, uh, individuals like Dr. Suleiman, Sir Emil uh, and the likes of them. And at that point in time, it was clear to the governors that if we do is to move forward, that it, they need to gather much political will to reset the organization. Consequently, a new set of strategic corporate statements were, were carved out and the board and governance structure were actually strengthened. It was at that point in time, a new board was introduced. It was at that point in time that the directors, the non-executive directors were brought in based on specified merit-based criteria. And at that point in time, for the first time, independent non-executive directors were introduced through an independent selection process. Significant changes were made to the corporate, corporate governance structure. The board charter was revised and the issue about tenant board members was, in, was, was introduced would discontinue the era of haphazard removal of board members. Now board members are brought in on eternal and they have to do self-appraiser uh, on the basis of their performance. New corporate statements were defined. Odua then said to become 
to be a world-class conglomerate, and the mission is to deliver sustainable returns for all stakeholders, thus enhancing the legacy of future generations. Core values were defined around resilience, integrity, respect, innovation, and collaboration. Collaboration especially from the point of view of both internal and external stakeholders consultation. And that's why most of you in this meeting are very important. It was defined that Udua will stop operating only more than 50% 50, 50 shares and allow other technical partners who are experts in the relevant fields to operate. Why Udua brings in his cloud as an investor into most of the initiatives. What has happened thus far? We've set the target of 40 billion revenue by 2025. And the things are driven in two ways. One is getting it right, and then driving growth as we get it right. Just like I mentioned, underpinning those two themes is the fact that we need adequate funding and capitalization. And those, that doesn't have to come from government, it doesn't have to come from the state, because now the state governors have taken a back seat and have actually selected board members who are being renewed, are being refreshed through an independent process. Also for us to enhance enterprise risk management. Under the governance and reporting thus far, new governance framework has been approved and it's been implemented. It allows tenor, board members, he allows board save appraiser, he allows board assessment. Performance management for the board was also introduced and independent directors were sourced through independent process and they sit now on the group board and also on some of the subsidiaries. With respect to people and culture transformation, new organization structures will approve and implemented lean new organization structure where Udo has also right-sized and also building the skill set of the people that are left in the organization. Corporate performance scorecard has been introduced. Executive management has been stretching at group level. In the last 20 years history of thereabout of Udo, it was just in 2020 that we have executive directors who are supporting the group MD. Below the group MD in the past, you used to have general managers. And it was only the group MD that represent executive at the board level. We might commence the employment of specialist skills in the investment and strategy area, and even in finance space. The focus also to increase profitability of the group. 5.2 billion profit after tax was achieved in 2020, representing about an 11.5% increase. The group has also commenced implementation of an ERP system to drive efficiency, transparency, and effective, effective reporting. Group reporting framework is also being implemented. New investments have been defined and key sectors have also been identified for purpose of growth. Relevant companies incorporated in a grid, oil and gas spaces, and new investment framework approved and implemented. Those relevant companies, like Swaco in Agri, in oil and gas, and also in technology space. For the growth and expansion, new growth sectors have been identified. Agri, technology, oil and gas, and logistics. This has been defined after thorough analysis of the growth potentials, demand and supply pool, and also state capability, internal capability, and also looking at the competitive advantage and comparative advantage of the Southwest. Technical and investment partners have been identified. Hospitality business is currently being repositioned. And Udua strategy is to get out of running those businesses as they used to do before. In conclusion, the journey has only begun. It's been a huge task. There's still a huge task ahead. 
but definitely I believe it's surmountable if we follow and we actually ensure the following imperatives for success. One, continue and ensure complete evolution of OICL operations to an investment oversight model. The new strategy of having partners and alliance for delivery of large mandate and strategic initiatives should be explored to the fullest. We should optimize the group's investment portfolio and revenue generation opportunities, ensure enhancement of the group operational efficiency through increased focus on eliminating waste, eliminating waste and delivery on a sound technology platform. The last imperative for me is we need to continue our adherence and it's extremely important. It's extremely important. Continue adherence to define board and corporate governance principles. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the only impossible journey is the journey you never begin. I think we began this and I think it's possible. So we should all join hands to make Udua the success Success has always been known for. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Tegbe, for that very elaborate presentation. We have seen the giant strides that Udua has made. Um, and this transformation is, is we, we've already begun, we, we've, we've seen the, the immediate impact of the transformation. I mean, an 11.5% uh, profit. So, you know, things are moving on very well. Thank you very much for that presentation, sir. We're going to go into a quick poll right now. But before that, we'd just like to recognize it. Taking time out of their very busy schedules to be here. Uh, a quick correction, Mr. Ade Adeyemi is actually a Sorry, Mr. Ade Ayemi is actually of Echo Bank Group. Sorry about the initial um, uh, error in your in your assignment. We also have Mr. Emmanuel Akimumi of the African Development Bank. You're welcome. Mr. Rotimi Oyekomi, you're also welcome. Mr. Bimbola Ogumbanjo, President of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Um, we've got Mr. Ade Shonubi, Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, we've got Alao Adebayo of Alaroye Media, you're welcome. Ayo Bajomo of FinTech Nigeria, Chief BC Ogunjo, Ogunjo B, pardon me, formerly of the African Development Bank. Chief Bolaji Ayorunde, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Sadimola Aladekomo, Chairman of CHAMS Group. Dr. Shea Awujobi, CEO of the Chartered Institute of Bankers Nigeria. Dr. Ebun Shunaya and Mr. Patai Solari, uh, the country head of Deloitte. Okay, we will not be tired yet because we have very eminent personalities here. Everyone is eminent, but just give uh, Kriva indulgence to just recognize a few more people before we go. Former president of CIBN, you're welcome. Segbenga Fatimilei, managing partner, Tiko Fatimilei and Co. Mr. Kadia Kikwe of FBN Quest, Dr. Mike Adiromu, President Nigerian Malaysia Business Council, Mr. Ni Yusuf, CEO of Dr. Sorry, Professor Oladiko Afolabi, Dr. Tokumbo Awolo Dosumu, Mr. Patrick Akinuton, the CEO of Ecobank Nigeria. the DG of Don. Thank you very much. You're all very welcome. Right now, we're going to go into a poll. Now, we've heard from the group MD, the group chairman, and also from uh, Mr. Joseph Tege of KPMG on Otoa. We want to quickly do a survey just to gauge your perception of the business. So right now, we're going to be launching a poll. This poll has just four questions. So please look on your screen right now and we'll take just about two minutes to answer the question. They're all, you don't have to type anything, just click on your preferred answers. 
So we'll just let this, let this run for about two minutes. So you need to scroll down for further questions. There are four questions in total. Green. Thank you, the re results are pouring in. There are 112 of us here and this is the advent all the entries are seen real time. So please vote, exercise your franchise. All right, our data is telling us only 43% have voted. So we have a compliance of 61% and we're going to give just 30 seconds more to complete this poll. Please vote if you haven't. And then we will publish the results. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we have done this for four minutes and we will be closing the poll right now. However, immediately we'll be analyzing the results. So please um, just stay tuned. Okay, so a total of, um, we had 74 votes in total. Right now on your screen, you would see the results of the poll. And I'll just take a few minutes. So out of a total of 112 people, 74 people voted. And first question says, do you perceive or do I investment company as a conglomerate? Here on this platform, I agree that Odoa is a conglomerate, and 14% of us disagree. So, the next question Are you currently in business or partnership with Odoa? 
and 20, 36% of us say yes. How any current partnership with Odua Investment Company Limited? Question three. Odua has interest in the following areas, solar and renewables, agribusiness, manufacturing, hospitality, financial services, oil and gas, logistics and e-commerce, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, real estate, ICT and digital. The question is, will you like to partner or invest with Odua? And we have a whooping 95% saying yes and 5% saying no. Which leads us to the fourth question, a related one. Indicate sectors you would like to partner on. For some percent of us want to partner in agribusiness, 18% in manufacturing, 19% in hospitality, 36% in financial services, 20% in oil and gas, 16% in logistics and e-commerce, 16% in healthcare and pharmaceuticals, 46% in in ICT and digital. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking time to participate in this poll. The management will take this as, um, you know, further engagement with you as, as we go on. So we're going to move on to the next item on the agenda right now, which is we'll be bringing back the chairman to um, take another session in his presentation. And we have Dr. Shegno Aino, who will be taking us through a session called It's a New Dawn for Business with Odua Investment Company Limited. So, Mr. Chairman. Kindly post your questions in the Q&A box if you have one. Please put it there and we'll attend to it. Thank you. Welcome back, Mr. Chairman. So th thank you very much, uh, Dipo. And I um, also thank uh, JT uh, for the presentation by KPMG. One of the things you said was that uh, there are huge tax ahead for surmountable. And I want to add with the support of all, particularly all of us that are here. And the, the news will be spreading in terms of the quiet and silent transformation that is going on in Udua and the opportunities for all. Uh, JT had captured some of the initiatives of Udua in the last uh, uh, few years, particularly since this board came on in May 2020. So my four slides, I've actually rushed the first three because some of the number of things they have mentioned. So I will concentrate more on the last slide, which speaks to investment opportunities and where we are, and where we are going. So to start with, um, when we, uh, the first slide, please, the first slide. Start with the first slide. No, not this one, yes, okay. Um, the board at inception, you know, decided to come up with a framework of facing the future and determine our board focus and, and, and priorities, which has been uh, captured here. And our two main objectives, the value of this company is to create shareholder value like any commercial organization because we do as a commercial organization, it's a government. I mean, it's, it's, it's a company of great public interest, but it's not a, 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 a government business as in the public service. So, shareholder value is very, very important, and of course, create social impact. Social impact for our people, create significant employment, uh, uh, empower uh, the people. Uh, uh, economically so that we can improve the welfare of the people, particularly of the owner, owner states. So in doing that, we look at how to implement the issues of governance, where we are saying we want to operate under best corporate board practices, which we have done. We brought in a lot of new policies, issue blowing policies, uh, 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 um, uh, things about the you know, board evaluation. We have a quarter now that's going for the first time we do board evaluation every year. We have the board will be evaluating itself, just as it as 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 as, as it's happened in you know best run companies in the world today, like now with best practice. Issue of conflict of interest, which we take very, very seriously uh, on the board, and so many things that have been that, 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 that and we are doing this not only within the but also moving to other subsidiaries, transformation, digitization is very important. 
In fact, we are in the process of employing a chief digital officer that will not only digitize internal processes, but also supports digitization of processes in the subsidiary. And of course, that person will be the uh, MD of the new subsidiary work that we have just incorporated, Southwest Innovation and Technology Company Limited. And in addition, that company will also offer uh, investments into budging technology and innovation driven uh, entities, particularly within the, the Southwest, so that we can create a lot of jobs. You know, uh, 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 create new entrepreneurial, create jobs. But we have always said that the doer is supposed to create jobs, but not to create jobs within the doer, but to create thousands and millions of jobs, you know, within the Southwest. And that is why when we look at uh, the issue of strengthening human capital, we are reposition the human resource. We are going on an aggressive upskilling and reskilling process. And we also have unfortunately had to downsize probably about 30% of the staff in recent time. They were very good staff, I mean, when they joined, but the, uh, uh, the, the times have changed. So the, 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 the where we are going, we really need new set of skills. And we are, you know, we recruited some new staff with the required skills, highly competent, who will not only be providing services or do are, but for all the subsidiaries and of course also offering it to external uh, uh, organization as well. So we look at this as one on investment, uh, resuscitation of inactive subsidiaries, value as extraction from ideal assets. Odua has always been known as a country rich in assets, but you know, with very, very you know, uh, inadequate, inappropriate returns on those, on those assets. Our desire is to ensure that we sweat those assets and derive the maximum benefit uh, from them. And we are already seeing results in those areas. Uh, we're also going to new venture. I will talk about that when I get to the next, to the next slide. New strategy business units have been created. We now have a fully functional investment department. We do an investment company, but it has never had an investment department. So for the first time we have resourced the investment department, we've created an investment framework. So that when we are partnering, we really the kind of business we want to do and how we want to do and who we want to, to do it uh, with. And of course, partnership, joint ventures, alliances are the things that I want to do because we don't know that we, we don't want to be an operating uh, 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 investment holding company. We want to be a lean non-operating investment holding company, looking at opportunities in various sectors and looking for partners who have both the financial and the technical and other kind of uh, 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 strength that we can partner with. So Dua will leverage on its rich history, on its uh, good way and the political clout it has to be able to work with partners so that we have win-win uh, uh, you know, uh, outcomes. So as I was mentioned uh, by JT, the, uh, our battle cry in terms of our journey for 2021 to 2025 is Sweat, revive, and create. Sweat existing assets, revive body bond companies. I mean, I was told recently that, that uh, at, his, at, at his peak, we do have 25 subsidiary companies. Currently, now only five of them are operating. The number of the ones that are not operating, we are actually already actually getting interest from a few institutions who want to work with us to bring them to, to, bring, uh, to uh, bring, bring them up. So that can do that can be revived with the revived, and those that believe is gone and lost, maybe the business in that sector is no longer uh, something that we worry about, then those will be closed and we move on. Of course, we are creating new ones. I will mention those areas that we have created new 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 ventures. So quick wins that we have had in the last 14 months. We have completed the governance reforms and the shareholders have been excellent. They were able to within a period of time agree on the new shareholder agreement, which they now they all signed. If we revise the memorandum article acquisition to fall in line with the current uh, uh, requirements in, uh, in best practices, we've onboarded two independent executive directors uh, who are there on their personal, but not representing any, not representing any anything government. And they have been quite useful in the journey ahead. Of course, including also the two executive directors. And then of course, investment flow. I mean, uh, we've able to also push and push for more uh, 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 investment, particularly by our new shareholder. And of course, organizational design so that we can uh, have a sync between the uh, group, between the group office, between the head office and the subsidiaries. So everybody is working together to ensure that, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, a meeting of minds on all, on all, uh, on all issues. 
um, what we include the media profile, uh, media profile, business holiday engagement, which is what we are doing uh, today. We created a PMO office to be able to monitor the presentation of what we are doing. These are not rockets, these are things that normally a good organization should, should do. But because it's important, we are doing it, it's looking like we are making a lot of uh, 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 progress, you know, in that in that aspect. So there are a lot of things that are that are that are that are that are, that are, that are We have a balance board now. Um, board security of tenure. So you are there for four years. You need to after four years if you perform. Your the board will decide whether you know uh, you are performing through the board uh, evaluation. And it's no longer uh, the, uh, the shelters changing board meter. And I must commend the shelters since we are. Uh, since we came on board in May 2020, they, that, that they have not intervened at all. They have not interfered at all in anything that we are doing. No governor has called me or called any of my colleagues to oh, say, why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? So they are living true to their word, believing that they have given this government to a team that can help them to, to achieve the objective which they told us from day one. The money they gave us, go and reposition and transform that, in, that, that transition to the, so that to be for the, to, to the joy of every stakeholder. Of that, of that, of that, of that company. So we have event, effective board committees meeting regularly to ensure that we move things forward. I mentioned another board evaluation, clear and attachable group reporting uh, structure. We also, um, 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 of course, this is just for information. Our vision to be a world class conglomerate. We achieved that last year. What will be a world class conglomerate? And that is what is driving us. How do how do world class conglomerates operate? So everybody that we ask ourselves is that. Is that the way to become a world class conglomerate when we are the board? What do we need to do to ensure that we continue on that journey? And to be quite interesting and 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 and, and, and very 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 uh, exciting so far. And of course, to deliver sustainable return to all people that announcing the legacy for future generations. We are not even announcing legacy for current generation. We are looking at the future the generations. And what that is telling us is that whatever we meet on the ground. We will not dissipate it, we will not you know, uh, reduce it, but we will build on it so that future generations will have something better than, you know, uh, that, that, was, that was on the ground. And if uh, successive board, board do that, of course, the DUA will be a company that can be globally reckoned with you know, in the years to come. JT, I talk about the value of earlier on. Um, uh, this is the high point of the presentation in terms of. Uh, what we want to do and how we want to partner with our organization. We have selected eight key sectors that we want to, some, some of them we operate in them already. In hospitality uh, business for, for instance, we have the Lagos Airport Hotel, a great, you know, valuable, well-located piece of, uh, you know, real, real estate, but whose returns over the years have not been as expected. A lot of things are going on there now. And the ultimate is to, uh, partner with the global brand that will run that uh, 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 hotel and make it deliver what you should deliver. We know that most of, a lot of the good hotels in the Kenya are doing extremely well, and there's no reason why Lagos Airport Hotel cannot compete with the best in that uh, in that in that area. So we are looking for partners, you know, who can come in and join us. And come, talking about joining us for some of these investments. Because of the subsidiaries, we do our own DM 100%. We are told to ourselves, because we don't want to run all these companies, we don't want to own them 100%. It doesn't make sense for you to own them 100%. We better to bring in partners that have all the things, including the, uh, uh, the, 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 the experience in managing such uh, organizations. Who can, who can manage it so that if we, if we have, have 20, 30% of the business that is generating a lot of money for us, better go to half 100%. A company that you have to even be pumping money into, as we have done uh, in the past on some of the on some on some, on some, on some of the on some of the business. Other than they generating revenue, actually there has actually been a drain on the resources of uh, of Odua. In the hospitality business too, we have the premier Western Hotel, the of two hotels, the premier hotel in Nevada, and then the uh, the Lafayette Hotel. We are already looking at some proposals for turning around the premier hotel that is best off, but we still open. If you have anybody that is interested in partnering with us, having a stake in that, in, the, in, the, in, that, in that hotel and running it, and running it in the way that to achieve uh, purpose and, and, and objective. That's about, about real estate uh, business. We also into, uh, uh, so that, that, that about uh, hotel, uh, totality. 
real estate, our flagship real estate business is uh, Wemaboy, which actually started business even before Dua was, uh, was created. The focus on becoming what you have been now, we have now expanded that focus. That will not only be involved in managing real estate that you have, but also creating new estates, creating new, uh, 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 new, I mean, getting new, 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 new properties, and also managing real estate for other institutions. In that respect, the company will be setting up a facility management company. We should be taking, we should be managing those uh, 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 properties so that and it will be in partnership. That, that company will be owned uh, with a partner that has, you know, experience uh, in that line of, uh, of, of business. Uh, the uh, the, uh, the, the Board Limited will also be creating new projects, expanding opportunities for new properties, and we've done a lot in that, in that respect in, re in recent times. So we are really very uh, uh, optimistic about the progress that that company is making. So there are a lot of opportunities for joint venture uh, projects, a lot of opportunities for co investing in some property uh, uh, businesses, the Grammar Board. Um, ag uh, ag agriculture. Agriculture is an area that is very, very important and dear to the heart of everybody in Nigeria, particularly in the, in the Southwest. So the, there's a new community that was formed, Southwest a big community called Swako, um, which uh, taking off, we have an excellent uh, board, an excellent management team that are, that, are, that, are, that are driving it. And very soon you will see the outcome of some of the things that they are planning to do, to be the platform for aggressive investment into agricultural uh, business within the Southwest through partnerships that they are putting together and working with the best, you know, in that in that in that, in that field to be able to ensure that we not only uh, get uh, have food security in Nigeria and in the Southwest, but also create the platform for exporting the surplus food that may not be consumed consumed in, in Nigeria. This is one of the companies that we are really looking. Uh, forward, you know, uh, a little. There's also the ICT and digital. I mentioned earlier on the Southwest Innovation and Technology Committee, which was recently incorporated. And I want to give kudos to about 15, you know, uh, business leaders in the ICT area who work for almost a year, meeting almost every week, pro bono, you know, because of the internet that we do, uh, to come up with a framework for this uh, incursion into ICT and digital, which would be a lot of promise for our teaming young people in Nigeria and particularly in the Southwest. The outcome of their effort is the setting up of this company. And as I mentioned earlier on, uh, we are in the market to look for a chief digital officer to drive the digital within the world and also to help this company and make it fulfill because that's a lot, a lot of opportunities for our young people. A lot of our young people, they are taught, they are very brilliant, they are taught that brilliant can be channel towards productive things because with a company like, like this that can provide them investment, that can provide them incubation and acceleration facilities, that can provide them with funding to be able to actualize uh, their dreams. So we are looking for partners in you know, this. We, got, we already got about one or two partners that we have signed up with. We'd we like to create an innovation village, which will be a hub of activity. There are so many things that have been planned and we we touch we touch every sector uh, every, every every state that the Dua is, uh, is is represented. Uh, another uh, new maybe the house is the our question to the oil and gas uh, business. Uh, sometime this last year, the federal government uh, advertised for uh, uh, bidders for the marginal oil, oil field, and the Dua put in an, an application and went through the entire process and was successful in winning the bidder oil field located in, uh, in, uh, in those things. It was very strategic in terms of where, where we want to have that field and we want that field together with another partner. So we are in the process of paralyzing the partnership agreement, getting uh, uh, an operator and investor. You know that a lot of money is required for investment in the oil and gas uh, uh, business. So again, this is another area where there are opportunities for willing investors to join hands uh, uh, with us to be able to make this uh, happen. We, we are to financial services, we have been financially involved in financial services through our investments in those days in, uh, I think in uh, National Bank now, in Rema Bank, also in Glamville and Toby. We want to also create new entities in those, in those areas 
particularly uh, uh, something it did in the area of, uh, of fintech as well. As you know, fintech is a related phenomenon in financial services. We want to see how we can play heavily in that area to support the, our existing financial services institution and create new financial services organization as well. Healthcare, uh, COVID has shown you know, what it is and I brought attention into the need for aggressive investment in healthcare. We have decided to uh, be in this, in, this, in, this, in, this, in this sector as well. So uh, uh, we were expecting to have suggestions and uh, interest for us to be able to work on this together and create uh, 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 an healthcare an, an platform that will help and support our people and bring medical tourism to, uh, to the Southwest. So those are the principal areas, apart from the other than like energy and logistics uh, business and so on and so, on, and so, on, so forth. So uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'll try to summarize these areas where we have immediate need for partnerships and investment, but they are to be because it's a, dynamic, it's a very dynamic society, it's a very dynamic system, things can come anytime, or ideas or uh, information can come. We will look at every opportunity and, but our investment will be consistent with our already approved investment uh, 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 framework. So thank you very much again for, for listening and we'll be hoping to hear from you a lot of uh, insight, a lot of suggestions, a lot of guidance, a lot of interest so that going forward we'll be able to uh, 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 do business uh, together. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Shegoeno. Group Chairman Odua Investment Company Limited for new done for business with Odua Investment Company Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, we, this is 13 minutes after 12, and we promised you that by one o'clock we'll be done with this. So we're going to move very quickly into the next segment of the event today. We're going to be taking another poll so the first poll we took was on the business. This poll we're going to have right now is a perception poll. And it also has just three questions. So I would encourage all of us to please look at our screens. They are all objective questions. Please take time to answer the questions on the screen right now. We had 74 votes the last time. I'm encouraging you all to please vote this time around, exercise your franchise. Thank you, the numbers are rising, we're doing good. Oh, as I say, So ladies and gentlemen, while we're, you know, answering the questions on the poll, if you do have any questions, please post it into the Q&A box because that's the next item on the agenda. We're going to be taking questions now. So do not put them in the chat box. Instead, put them in the Q&A. Thank you. If you have put a question in the chat box, I would encourage you to please transfer them to the Q&A box so that they can be dealt with as seriously. Thank you, we're on 68 votes now and there are 118 of us. So please let's, let's do this for another minute. Okay, at this point we have Sapa. Um, so let's let's keep going. We have broken our own record, so let's set set a new one.
And so right now we'll give 30 more seconds for anyone else who wants to, who wants to answer the poll. We're on 80 votes right now. Fifteen seconds, ten seconds. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that eighty of us voted, representing sixty seven percent. And please indulge me by looking on your screen right now as we share the results of the poll. So out of a total response of 80, 80 found this session to be useful. That's good feedback. Thank you very much. So the next question, will, will you like to be contacted by Ojoa for investment opportunities? 86% of us said yes, 5% said no, and 9% said they were not sure. So thank you for the feedback. Um, hopefully we'll convert the not sure to a yes. And for the last question, in the last 12 months, what has been your perception of Ujua as a business? 89% of us say said positive and 11% of us said negative. So um, this 11% matches our, our profits in the last year, so we we will work on it to reduce the negative perception and increase our profitability. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for responding to the poll. We're going to go into our Q&A session right now. And uh, All right, so we have, we have Mrs. Shalakwe Hammond representing the governor of Lagos State's Excellency Babachide Songwondu. We'll be taking her comments The first question we have here says that, how can Udua investment approximate the economic aspirations of the South West um, Pestle's objective. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to direct that question to you. Um, how can Udua investments approximate the economic aspirations of the Southwest? And that question is from Mr. Femi Awiemi. Mr. Chairman, did you hear me, Dr. Aino? Oh, hold on. Okay, so can the you, can question you speak? from Femi, yeah, can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Hello. Yes, the question from Femi is how can we do investment approximate the economic calculation of the Southwest Pensions Objective and that decision transform into an investment of near the challenge of its funding mandate to aggregate and establish vegetable engagement equity for private equity and so on so forth. Yes, that, that, that's exactly what you want to do. I was here, I was actually expecting Femi to share his thoughts on that question himself, having been a public analyst himself, uh, an economic analyst, but that is kind of things we want to hear from our distinguished participants here. But the idea, our idea is that we do actually eventually be transformed you know, into the sovereign wealth fund for uh, the stakeholder, particularly for the Southwest region, which will harness a lot of resources from everywhere and anywhere and use it to invest, to galvanize the economic development of the entire people of the Southwest and even beyond, because even though the mandate is principally and primarily the Southwest, which will be our focus, but we are also saying that there are investment opportunities that have huge return from anywhere in the world, anywhere and anywhere in the world, we do have will invest in it's just like the the kind of uh, peer comparison that we are doing with organizations like similar to like the Mumbadala of the UAE 
Temasek of uh, Singapore, uh, State Investment Corporation of, uh, of, uh, of Mauritius, and all of that, for which for which we have reached out to, to study how they have evolved over the years and how they have become the, 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 the in terms of being an investment organization that has been so successful and also driving change and prosperity for their, for their, for their various uh, people. So that is the dream, and we hope that uh, working with all of you will be able to achieve this, this purpose. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. We'll take another question from Femi Ekundayo. As desirable as it is, what is the plan of Ojua Investment Company Limited to attain economic stability, independence, and self-sufficiently for the Southwest region? Which one? Uh, the question from Femi Ekundayo. Which one do you want? Okay. The question from as Femi Ekundayo. As it is, what is the plan of Ojua to attain? Yes, to attain economic sustainability, independence, and self-sufficiency for the southwest uh, uh, region. Yes, that's also another good question, which is also top, 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 top of my mind. In my presentation, we recall that I mentioned the issue of ensuring that through our various investments that we're making in the various uh, sectors, both by Odua directly and through the subsidiaries, though they're sitting and the new one that we created, we want to. In the past, a lot of people have also believed that Udua is supposed to be creating jobs within Udua uh, for employees, so that we have more employees, even if we are not doing anything. But we have changed the narrative that says we are supposed to create employment, but that employment will be created outside to empower new people, new entrepreneurs, we create new entrepreneurs, provide them the support mechanism that, 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 that we have, support our young graduates. Who we should not necessarily be, be looking for jobs that can create jobs by themselves. That's why we are going heavily into agriculture. We have generated some, some investment with some partners in agriculture, in the cassava. We are working with the Australia uh, uh, Campino to do dairy production and so on. So this, this will be new dresses that will be created in partnership with Udua. I was mentioned the, uh, the ICT, which is something that is very dear to us in terms of the digital transformation of the satellite, not only to create jobs, but also bring a lot of uh, development, you know, within the within, 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 within the satellite. So we're talking about real estate, we know, we, 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 I know what, I know, I know what the uh, world is doing in terms of, you know, uh, creating low-cost housing for our people and so on and so forth. So if you do this in these various sectors, we will be able to uh, meet the kind of objective that are talking about in terms of economic sustainability, independent and self-sufficiency, you know, in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the Southwest region. But the journey is not for Odua alone. Odua, Odua is just a platform. Odua is just the institution which we want people to plug into, people with the idea to plug into, so that we can all together work with all our mind and all that we have to create the kind of a world we want for, our, for, our, uh, uh, for ourselves and for, and for our people. And reduce the tension, reduce the uh, social uh, problem that we have in the uh, environment, which have been caused by hunger and social, you know, social uh, you know, uh, uh, imbalance. I believe Udua has the uh, uh, has the, the right pedigree with the support of you to be able to achieve all this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor Enough. So At this time. We'd like to take a short break on the questions and welcome a remark from um, Mr. Sholakwe Hammond representing His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State. So, we'll take your remark um, right now. Excellent. Great. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, congratulations to the uh, chairman and the board and management of Odua Investment uh, Company. It's a real pleasure to be here representing the governor, uh, Mr. Babajide Olu Sholasanwulu, who unfortunately couldn't be here. Uh, we actually have another event focused on agribusiness happening today. Uh, so he has um, hopefully done the next best thing, which is ask me to come here. I run the State Investment Promotion Agency and I've been very keen and following all that Udua uh, Investment Company has been doing. And so very excited to be here to represent him. Um, it's been a, a wonderful session so far uh, and really have to commend, I think I've commended 
the MD in private, but uh, you know, commend the entire board. This is not only uh, very interesting, but very timely. Um, and it's been very exciting for us as Lagos to become part of the Odua family. I know it's a conversation that has been on for many, many decades. I'm very happy that the current board and management have been able to make this happen. I think the true integration of the Southwest region um, heralds great things, not just for the Southwest, but for and its people, but also for the entire country and the continent. Um, so just to speak a little bit, um, I think just to say from, um, Mr., uh, from Mr. Governor that, um, we are very, very proud and happy to be part of you know, this big family. We are very excited about the opportunities, as has been said by the chairman. Right now, it is the time to invest, 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 uh, and create. There's so many opportunities, and not least of which for us, we, we're very focused on the Africa Free, uh, free Zone, uh, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, and the opportunities that it brings. We know that we need to be ready as a state. And um, nothing can give us greater pleasure than to be working together with uh, you know, our partners in the immediate Southwest to actualize that opportunity. Um, as you know, we Nigerians, we're very, very um, business oriented, very, very progressive. And we are, I, I, I like to believe that Nigeria should get the best of the best end of this, of this um, agreement. Um, and so as it's very interesting that as we're coming together as a continent that we are coming together in greater solidarity as a region. And I think that's the right direction, the absolute right direction. I'm also very excited to hear um, about the way and manner that the board, and obviously such an erudite board, uh, is going about it. Um, you know so many of the legendary people who are on that board. And so no surprise at all to see the strategy, which I think is probably the highest, fastest growth strategy um, you know, we co co collaborating and cooperating with other people, bringing the knowledge that they have, the skills that they have, the experience that they have, and deploying capital together will help us be able to um, go into these many industries that we're in and sectors that we're interested in very quickly um, and be able to you know, achieve some of the things that we want to achieve. Um, so that's also been very, very exciting. Um, so I think just to keep it very short, in the spirit of all that has happened here today, Lagos is very interested. Um, and we can see that the very first investment was Ikeda Industrial Hub. We don't think that's an accident. A lot of your investment opportunities are going to land in Lagos. And we're looking very much forward to working, not just with Odoa Investment, with, with all the investment partners here, potential investment partners here on the various sectors uh, of interest. Thank you very much again for the opportunity and congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Jolabwe. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for, for that. This is Hammond representing His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State. Right now. So, Chairman, there are some questions here regarding funding. And you know, they're about <laughs> yes, I, I know. I think let, let's, take, yes, let's take one or two. Can we take one or two more comments? Uh, Dr. Dr. Salami. Can you allow the salam to speak? And then Mr. D. I am the good CEO of um, Echo Bank Tanzania Incorporated. Dr. Dr. Salami. Dr. Salami, the chairman of um, the Economic Advisory Team uh, to the President. Can you, uh, can you please unmute him? All right, he's been given access. Right. Um, a very good afternoon to you, uh, Chairman, distinguished. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, yes, we can. can. Yeah, very quickly. You can hear Many thanks, uh, Chairman, and uh, it's a pleasure to be to join you this morning. I've listened to is very encouraging. But let me focus on perhaps a couple of things. First of all, we are Odua, by undertaking this webinar today, has brought itself into the public domain in a way that it may struggle to keep itself out of. So uh, transparency is not going to be part. It's either you're going to be fully transparent or you're not going to be transparent. So if you've started along this route, I hope this can be continued. However, there are two things that I would like to draw your attention to. The first is a need for us to be clear. What is it exactly 
that we should expect in terms of outcomes, not just the generalized statements about where we will invest and how we will invest, but what kind of performance outcomes should we hold you responsible for? The second, which I would draw your attention to is the Continental Free Trade Agreement. It's already live. And for me, an important dimension will be how does UDWA perform in this domain? Uh, Mr. Chairman, you have a lot ahead. A lot's been done, but believe me, the road ahead is going to be far from smooth. I wish you every success as you navigate it. And I'm sure all of us on this call will continue to support you as much as we can. Thank you very much and a very good morning. Thank you very much Doreen, for those uh, talks and uh, we'll, we'll, put it, we'll put it in mind. And of course, we'll also be engaging with you because you have been one of the people working behind the scenes many, many years to get to draw to where it is today. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Ade Aye Yemi, the Group Managing Director, and the Group, group Chief Executive Officer, Ecobank Transnational Incorporated, Lume. So go. Can you please submit him? Okay, I think I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, you can hear you. Adi. Apologies for the way I'm dressed. I'm on vacation. So, but when we do our calls, uh, one have to uh, to respond. And I will say congratulations to the chair and also the members of the board and everybody that has made today uh, happen. Uh, it's always difficult to speak after the erudite doctor, but I will I try to say a couple of things. When I was growing up and Odua is mentioned, it also says Ogbombe Enyonwa. So you have enough of the history that you can leverage to be able to create opportunities that can respond to the questions that our people are asking. I'm excited by the decision to be an investment holding company rather than a company that tries to run operating companies on your own. Because then by being an investment holding company, you can use the power of your investment to direct operating entities in the way you want them to, to go. Being an investment holding company, it is important that you define your investment horizon. You, the places you want to go, yes, but how long do you want to stay there? Because ultimately, you should try the same way we deal with our kids, we bring them to life, we nurture them, we send them to school, thereafter, we want them to be able to go on their own and do better than us. Therefore, you have an investment horizon. And that puts pressure to be able to perform and deliver. And when that investment horizon ends, you should find your way out. And your way out most likely should be the stock exchange so that all the companies you invest in will be transparently managed with the defined objective of being able to exit. And then you take your capital to another place. As you start doing that, and you're able to demonstrate to the marketplace that you are a good investment anchor, you will see other elements, other people co-investing with you. You see banks investing in your investing company because Odua investment is there. And that is the way I think you can aggregate more and more investment resources to direct at opportunities to solve the problem that we are seeing in the Southwest and honestly, across the, 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 the country. I'm sure that with you leading the way, we'll be able to create a better Southwest and a better Southwest, a better Nigeria. And of course, as the doctor said, the continental free trade area becomes an avenue for us to take our raw materials into exportable goods. A congratulations once again, Chair, and thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Adi Ayemi, for those uh, remarks. We will also be taking, uh, looking at some of the other questions, but before I uh, pass on to Dibot to do that, uh, I think the uh, Adi Adiola would like to speak for a minute on um, uh, uh, social finance, on, on, the, on the oil and gas uh, business, He's the managing director, social finance for Standard Chartered Bank in the UK. 
And of course, we are going to have uh, this is Tony Adeniji, executive director of Bank of Industry, who also will speak for a minute. And then we'll go back to the questions before we take the final round of uh, individual speakers. Can you uh, allow Adi Adiola to speak? Yes, doing that right now. Good afternoon. Um, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you could see my um, screen. Um, good afternoon. It's a, a real uh, privilege to join uh, today. Uh, if you can hear me, please. Um, um, oh, that's excellent. Um, and uh, thanks very much for the opportunity to uh, to witness uh, a very um, resource rich event uh, of this quality that provides a, a pathway and a clear vision to the repositioning of uh, Odua investment uh, and uh, the legacy and to build further on the legacy that has been created over the years. Um, um, I would uh, agree with uh, Ade, which was uh, in terms of uh, having a clear pathway in regarding uh, being an investment holding company is very much a, a private equity uh, based discipline and governance. But the specific area um, that uh, I'm asked to speak about today has to do with energy uh, and oil and gas. Now, as you're probably aware, we are in a different environment uh, where the traditional construct and concept of oil and gas is uh, moving beyond upstream oil and gas as we know it to spanning the entire value chain from upstream to midstream and to the downstream and services. And uh, uh, very encouraged to see the strides that have been made with uh, the marginal field license. But beyond that, uh, the challenge I want to just pose to everybody uh, is to, to be thinking very much around energy access for our people energy access for industries, energy access for domestic, and being able to leverage the significant amount of resources that we have um, uh, from both the supply side as well as the demand side. The one piece that uh, sometimes the narrative around oil and gas production uh, sent to me is that uh, Nigeria and indeed the Southwest has the biggest consumptive capacity that can be transformational for our industries. So we've got um, um, <clears throat> industrial, we've got the, we are very privileged that the major pipeline networks for gas, which is going to be the energy source for the future, and a number of the gas fields that are available in the southwestern part of Nigeria, they are actually a significant catalyst for infrastructure as well as industrial development. So being able to have spurs that will take gas and provide energy for power generation primarily, but also to re rejuvenate the industrial estates that we do have in Ibadan, to uh, Shagamu, Ijebode, and some of the new industrial uh, establishments around Ore. Those are things that we need to look at, but, more, but over and above that, the role of providing cleaner energy through gas uh, and gas, domestic gas being available for women and for families to be able to cope, uh, to cook and to be able to generate small scale industries. This is actually something we should look at. So um, as we continue this dialogue, one area that we, I would like to certainly partner and work closer with uh, the board and the management is very much around energy access and how energy access can be used as a transformational tool for both industrial as well as uh, uh, commercial development within the sub-region. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Adi, for that for those remarks and for your expression of interest to work with us on this area of energy, which is really very, very important for our fundamental to economic uh, uh, the, the development of the South of Satos. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Tony Adiniji, Executive Director MSME Bank of Industry. Are you ready for a very, very brief remark? 
Um, yes. Um, good afternoon, and um, thank you for, for inviting me. And it's been a very, very um, exciting um, session. And um, I'm also very happy to be part of this um, meeting. I've, there's so many people here that I'd like to call out um, sort of individually, but I think that would also take um, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of time. Um, but great to be here. And, um, you know, very, very exciting times for Odua. Um, investment. Um, I I also remember growing up and um, and Odua was a very sort of it was like a legacy. It was like a name that just you know you heard all the time, and it really it really resonates with um, investment, with um, growth, with progress, and also something of pride as well. And so I'm really looking forward to that whole thing being. Um, sort of being sort of the new thing again, where Odua just takes its, its place and it can begin to resonate the way it always has. Um, well, um, talking for the Bank of Industry, um, as you know, um, you know, the Bank of Industry really needs no um, introduction in terms of the role that we play in development um, across board, really, when we talk about large enterprises, so the big investments, when we talk about SMEs and trying to sort of strengthen them so that they can take their place on um, in economic prosperity, and also even going down to micro, where we should not leave out that end of the value chain, because without that end of the value chain, even the you know the medium and the large enterprises like the ones we have talked about, they will not thrive. So um, the bank of industry does work and support across the board really when it comes to um, growth and economic prosperity in Nigeria. Um, the Bank of Industry is also a partner to Odua um, in some of actually in specific deals, we actually are invested. Um, top of mind is um, hospitality, the Lagos Airport Hotel where we, 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 we've, we have been on board um, right from, from the onset and we continue to to see to, to sort of make sure that we, we thrive in that space so that's just calling out one but we are not um, new or strangers to Odua and that is um, expected that will not change um, as a matter of fact I think um, with this um, new um, thrust in its strategy I think there's a lot of room for us to um, explore further collaboration and make sure that we really sort of take advantage of, 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 of what we have, you know, of that um, relationship that already exists. Um, as I said, the sectors, you know, we're open to pretty much um, all the sectors um, that Udua is in, um, maybe say for, for sort of direct real estate, but we are quite open to sort of exploring opportunities to, to collaborate. One of the things that I really, really um, like was the, is the fact that Udua is opening up and saying, you know, we don't have to own everything 100%. We're open to investors. We're open to partnership. We're open to seeing how, you know, we can take things further. You know, um, I, like, I like to say that, you know, 10% of a successful um, investment is something and 100% of you know, of a failed investment is zero, really. So I think that whole idea of opening up to other investors, I think it's going to be um, really, really interesting in terms of, of, of partnerships with, with financial institutions like ours and like others as well. Um, so we, we, you know, I, we look forward to, to that. And so one of the things um, that I'd like to leave um, us with is, again, just to um, encourage you know, the new team, um, leadership team at Udua, it's, um, it's a really, really formidable team. They're all experts that bring in so much to the table. And, you know, we're not new to this. Um, so the Bank of Ind Industries, um, we have very open doors. Um, we welcome going into um, deeper, um, deeper discussion um, on specific deals. We look forward to engaging with you. We look forward to being part of that journey. And we look forward to also being part of, you know, the history when it is written um, for this phase of um, Udua investment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deniji, for the submissions. We are getting back to you to see how we can deepen the relationship between the Udua investment and subsidiaries and the Bank of uh, Industry, particularly in the area of uh, supporting our millions, you know, of uh, small-scale businesses 
within the southwest because those are the engines of development in our in our region and i know that you being in charge of that will be a very valuable partner in supporting the initiative that we have in that in that respect um you see i've got a two people to have two people to speak uh, this is Bakia Kiwumi, and if i did shouldn't be the Democratic central bank is still on and we also want him uh to speak but before we do that let me quickly go through some of the questions again on the chat box and quickly answer them anonymous attendee the house who i see funded what the what efforts have been made to expand this funding base of course as a, as a commercial entity it's a very primarily funded by our shareholders in terms of their shareholding but board and management now to look for other funding sources to be able to run the business the way the way the way the way, the way it should be run so we get partners to bring in funds we, we are going to create uh, investment funds in various uh, sectors that we use to address some of the areas that we want to uh, to go into. Are they, are they ask, are you looking to work with the Nigerian uh, Sovereign Investment Authority, another sovereign wealth fund for partnership and investment to develop with the world class uh, XWF? Yes, I mentioned that in my remarks that we actually trying to partner and work with some, you know, uh, uh, a paired sovereign wealth fund across the world and also seek for our own sources of attracting those funds to be able to uh, invest it in the areas that we want to invest to. And your back job on or back of industry also say which of are inactive and what are the compelling reasons to revive them. Uh, also like I mentioned a number of them I can't I can't I can't I, I mean some of them include the plywood for instance uh, we have the is it, uh, captain press fish is coming up in Nigeria, so many of them, so many of them in various, various areas that the founders of this institution have invested since in those days and are not doing very well. So we are looking at, particularly looking at each other them one by one, look at the ones that can still uh, 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 be revived and those that cannot be revived for various reasons, I mean, cocoa industry, agriculture, the textile means, and so on and so forth. These are companies that have done very well in the past focusing on the needs of those of those of, 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 of those things. So we will try and revive the one that can be revived and use the resources or the assets of those that cannot be revived to, to meet them with the emerging uh, businesses. Uh, Mr. Fabio Kundayo asked what is your the past president uh, CRDN, what is your roadmap for tourism uh, uh, development? Uh, we we do have we do not have anything specific right now, but if you or anyone has any 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 thoughts as to how the thoughts we, we are in business to make money, we are in business to develop our environment, we are in business to empower our people. So whatever business that meets with our aspirations uh, and that also meets with the arena of the whoever bringing business, we work with them. But right now, I can tell you we don't have any specific roadmap for, for tourism, but we, we welcome any thoughts on that. Kula we talk about telecommunication is a money-making venture in Nigeria. What is being done to revive the drug? I've talked about reviving money bond uh, entities. Dua Telecoms is one of them. We are actually working seriously on the Dua uh, Telecom to know exactly where uh, we have that and then what should be the next step in terms of uh, moving uh, forward. Either as a Dua Telecom or probably you know, look at emerging opportunities in you know uh, telecoms and digital generally and see how we can use that to achieve the objective uh mr Emmanuel Futayo, who is the director in uh, uh Wema board say why can't i say be listed on the on the exchange these are the base that have been on have been uh you know a lot of people have suggested this, this, this to me these are things that no, no yet of, you know we can't do it we can't do everything in one year so we i should take our steps we look at opportunities so and I know that Otumba uh, uh, um, uh, the, the president of the Nigeria Stock Exchange is on, is on, is on this call. Uh, we, we, we know that when, if, if, if and when that is seen as desirable and supported by the shareholder, we will take that, uh, that route. Um, what is the mechanism for joint investment? I think I, will you have that anomaly attendee? Well, you can type your name and number. The group uh, executive director for investment, Mr. Golan Mbakdoj, will reach out to you to tell you about our mechanism for joint investment and uh, the way we want to support because we have an investment template 
you have the venture capital arm is telling for greenfield investment. Yes, that is something that we are working on. Uh, Mr. Bimbola Gumba and your president's Kenya Stock Exchange Group as we do effectively resolve to commercialize his businesses, thereby removing all aspects of subsidies currently in play. Yes, indeed. Yes, we, we, are, we, we, we are want to be 100% commercialized, run as a commercial entity, making his own money and using the money that he's making to invest in new entities. That is the plan, and that is what we are, and we, and we are making progress in that in that respect. Uh, Larry Oshibono, former Treasury uh, Advisor to the Vice President on ICT, it is encouraging to hear the progress made thus far by the new board. However, it is encouraging to understand better the business structure of the organization. What is the advantage of government stake versus the private sector? It is 100% owned by the government of the six southwestern states. And like I mentioned earlier on, it is a company, the Odua company, the Odua and the Sogali companies of significant public interest, but not a public entity. So that has been the confusion over the years. And it's now being clear that Odua Investment is, is a registered, incorporated investment holding company in Nigeria which is positioned to run as a commercial entity without any interference or any, uh, uh, any, any, any direction by, this, by, 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 by the owner, except of course, as soon as and shareholders during annual, annual general meeting or January general meeting. And from the value that has been in the last one year, that has been the way we have been operating. And that is the world reason for the success that we have achieved uh, today. Emmanuel Akiumi of African Development Bank, uh, what steps are we taking to mobilize development finance vision and other investors globally, including Nigeria and entrepreneurs and Korea and diaspora? The implementation of the Dua Group. Uh, but George is doing a lot in that respect, working with the Group MD and the other executive, executive director. Luckily, Emmanuel, you know Golam very well. Emmanuel is one of the people that work with us to bet the Southwest innovation uh, technology. Professor James Fabri from the US. To succeed as a world class conglomerate, OICM, we need the strategy for keeping up with emerging technologies. What is the strategy of, for research and development of emerging technologies? That is what we'll be doing with Southwest Innovation and Technology. And we'll also be working with other organizations in the research and development, in the research and development area to see how we can you know, leverage on emerging technologies, leverage on emerging sectors of the economy, and make sure that things uh, happen. I think. I need to stop at this uh, stage uh, because we have just seven minutes to close. Um, 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 so, so, but we have the all the questions are there. We will be looking at them and we'll be getting back to people that have asked the the, the questions. So, I apologize for not able to uh, to do that. So, um, Mrs. Dumake, can we just speak in, for a minute, please? You I want to speak for a minute, and then if uh, Mr. Adi. Uh, and it should be the deputy governor of CBN is still with us. Well, yeah, I think he's still with us. So please speak for a minute so that we can round up. But we want to really close this by 12 on the dot. I'm sorry, by 1 p.m. on the dot, Nigerian time. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. So I hope everyone can hear me. Good afternoon, uh, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I'll be speaking a couple of minutes um, about the real estate uh, sector. My very first engagement with uh, Udua actually happened via Wemaboard about 15 or 16 years ago, when uh, I led uh, a group that audited the portfolio of, uh, of Wemobot. Very interesting outcomes. Um, and I recall that over the next few years, we tried to, um, to act on some of the recommendations that we, uh, that we had uh, suggested at the time. Um, many things have happened, of course, in the space of 15 years in real estate across the world, uh, globally, and also, of course, in Nigeria. I was fortunate enough, uh, Chairman introduced me to the recent, uh, to the new M, to the MD, and we had a, a conversation about five or six weeks ago, and it was so good to hear the things that uh, are in the pipeline for Wemma Board uh, to do with its portfolio. Um, there are a couple of things that I've written here that I'd like to share. I think one of the critical things, at least for our own market, is an understanding of where the need is, um, but also an understanding of how to address that need. Uh, and so in this case, I'm really talking not just about uh, property type, but also about how these properties will be funded and how offtake would happen. Um, partnerships are great. 
uh, because there's no way that Wemo Board as an entity or Dua would have all the skills to make this happen. I think that the areas in which uh, Odua should be championing uh, uh, initiatives in the real estate sector, some of them would include ensuring that majority of the developments that you invest in uh, actually meet certain certifications. For example, green. I don't think that that should be the odd. It should, it should be more than normal. Um, also, we now, after um, the pandemic, we know that we have to create more healthy buildings. So I think we need to start thinking about policies which actually originate from Odua, but can then become even more nas nationally accepted. We have a building code that is either not used or, not, or has not even been accepted uh, nationally. I think that there's a role that uh, Odua can play in creating the policies that will ensure that developments in Nigeria go the way that they ought to go uh, in terms of uh, not just being healthy, but also being flexible. Um, we want to start thinking about urban regeneration. There's a lot of conversations around the fact that our urban areas don't work for people. Um, Lagos is an example. I mean, change is happening. Uh, we have to start looking at other things like transport infrastructure and how that affects the real estate that we have and how we can use uh, the fact that there's investment in, in transportation to uh, create the regeneration that we need to uh, create. Uh, Odua, clearly there's a lot of uh, legacy assets. There's sometimes when one has to look at a portfolio and divest from stuff, I think that there has to be the boldness to do that. I don't have a lot to say, a lot of good stuff to say, but Okay, yes. So, uh, so yes, I, I, I round up by something, a comment that you made yourself, sir, which was that um, while your business is to create shareholder value, there's also social impact. I think at the end of the day, it's absolutely important that even in the real estate space, we look at how we can combine, solution, create solutions that enable shareholders to get benefit, but also that there's an impact socially. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for those talks. We continue to engage with you. And we are one of the you know, we are the gurus in Nigeria that will depend on for uh, advice. So, so the last award will be from Mr. Day Shumi, the Deputy Governor Central Bank of Nigeria. We have been one of the actors working behind the scene on some of the initiatives that has led to where we are today. Um, I, 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 I think I want to just uh, you know make a few a few, a few remarks. I can see that I didn't see on the call. I don't know. Hello, is he muted? He'll, he'll be giving access now. Am I supposed to join as a panelist? No, no, yeah, to just speak. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you, you have been part of the journey, and uh, we appreciate all the contribution and support that you have been. Just want to you had about it to just uh, speak to us for a minute before we round up. Uh, but after your speech, we go to a vote of thanks and then we close. Hello. Hello, Adi. Ah, thank there. you. Sorry about that. I'm not a technical person. So. Uh, how can you be saying that? How can you be saying that? <laughs> we all say we are all IT, but we're not all technical. I'll be brief. I'll be brief. And I'd like to take off from some of the things that were said, like doing. Odua is a private equity firm with a social and developmental goal. So we need to separate the two. There's been a lot of talk about the expectations of a lot of people here. And everybody has reason to expect a lot from Odua, looking at the history that it has. But you can't be everything to everybody. And so as a private equity firm, we need to be focused. One of the key things is skills and competence. You will never have enough. From the number of people that have signed in today to listen to what you want to do and where you want to go, I think you have a big pool of people that you can always lean on to give you some idea, to help you build the competence, whether it's in-house or outside. There'll be opportunities. And that's why focus becomes very important. There are too many people, even today, everybody says, there's so much you can do in their area and you'll always have limited resources. So we need to be clear about that. Planning opportunity is one thing. Achieving is about energy. 
And so you have to drive management. It's not the role of board to go out and execute. It's to give direction. We have to drive management. And that's why the KPIs, I, I, I put in my own question on the KPIs. What are social KPIs? What are developmental KPIs? What are financial KPIs? How do we hold management accountable? How do we report it so that everybody can see the progress and growth that is Odua? And most important is the discipline. We've started something, but we need to see it through. If we don't see it through, we will come back. Uh, an example I'd like to give is when I got admitted into um, government college Ibadan, and my mother was so proud of me coming from primary school, his middle school. I think two years later, when I was like second to the last in class in form two, it was a different story. She was not exactly um, as proud of me as she should have been. Of course, I managed to fix it, which is why I am where I am today. But the truth is, it's not the start, it's not the opportunity, it's what we're able to do with it. And we have that great opportunity now. You have the attention, you have the support. Let's turn it into something so that when we're talking about Dua, the same way we look at the past and reminisce about what it was in our youth, what we knew it did, the same can be said. And the turnaround for Dua can start with you, sir, your board and the management that's there. Thank you very much. Okay, so I see a deeper step. Me, thank you very much, Ade, for those you like that. Thank you for the support that we have received from you and I'm happy to receive from you the knocking on your door. Good personally, I'm a central bank for this purpose. I'm a very, I apologize that uh, we said we keep it for only two hours. We are now sitting by 30 minutes and we need two or three more minutes of your time. If you don't mind, because we want to allow Mr. Kule Lebuki, the chairman of KPMG Africa, and the senior partner for KPMG in Nigeria, who has also been part of the Dua journey, uh, okay. to make uh, some money. Thank you, Kule, for being part of this. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good afternoon to all the distinguished guests on this, uh, this Zoom uh, um, intervention, uh, interaction. I I'm not going to repeat what many people have said already, um, especially what Adesh Film just said, but I just want to emphasize, um, and I'm going to give you so in, in three different buckets. One is your operating model. Uh, when I look at what Temasek in Singapore has achieved, they started off as a, a, uh, an entity that had asset, assets worth 70, 70 million dollars handed over to them by the government of Singapore. And 30 years later, those assets are worth 400 million dollars. So uh, in the same way too, you know, one of the benchmarks for the Dua to say, we need to continue to value our portfolio uh, as, as businesses and say to ourselves, are we actually creating value? Uh, and if you create value, definitely the social and economic aspects of our, of our strategy will, will also be achieved. So even though we are, yes, we are private equity business with a sovereign wealth fund uh, slant, uh, and I think that you know we need to do you know, you know to look at the progress of, of the portfolio we look after year on year, and then of course say to ourselves if a particular uh, uh, investment has got to a point where we think we can exit, then we should exit appropriately, and then use the capital that we that we, that we generate from that exit to then begin to invest in something else. So our return on investment in the should not just be a profit after tax, but it should be a combination of what we make from our current businesses, from what we gain when we when we dispose of our investments in businesses. Second thing is around transparency, which is the we to. We use this Zoom um, uh, interaction to open up yourself to the public. Uh, the only way to, is, is to go forward and continue to do increases to transparency to the point that one day, Udua will you know, actually publish his uh, annual reports uh, in the public domain. And I will, I will really be welcome to see when that happens. And then finally, I think that one of the things we need to do is to look at capital structure. We shouldn't let, let the fact that they're owned by state governments to be able to limit, to limit what we want to do. We should look at the possibility of should we have an, an, an Udua, Udua PE fund, where Udua is, is a sponsor for that fund, other investors co invest to Udua in that fund. That fund then makes investments in private, 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 private companies uh, under, a different, under a different structure so that we are able to use the Udua brand and track records to expand the bandwidth of, of what we want to invest in. I know you're doing that also already in, in the agribusiness area, but there are many more areas that I think Udua needs to intervene in. Uh, and we have, having a, a redefined capital structure. And allow us to get into healthcare, ed education, 
uh, infrastructure, another very important area of, of our socioeconomic development of Southwest Nigeria. Thank you, sir, for this fantastic uh, uh, interaction. All the very thank best. You much, uh, Kule, thank you very much. All your thoughts are uh, well noted, and of course, we will not uh, uh, leave you alone. We will continue to knock on your doors for you know uh, uh, support and for advice as you, as you move on. So thank you very, very much indeed. So um, I want to bring this to a close. And I want to thank everyone for being part of it. Well, the GMB will still do the vote of Tamani just to make my, my, my closing remark. This has been very, very useful. Uh, one, one, one element that I will fail to mention when I was talking is the issue of our social impact and corporate social uh, responsibility. Because I remember we didn't say this to during our last AGM and somebody brought it up. To put me uh, today, we decided to, set, to incorporate uh, an Udua Investment Foundation. Uh, from which I mean, into which a percentage of your dual property will be put into. This will be what will be used for commercial responsibility within the southwest and areas that uh, we are working on. And I think I, I saw Amin Ayagola on this call. Amin Ayagola is our consultant in that is one helping us to you know dimensionally put it together and make and make and, 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 and make it up. Amin now ran started and ran the MTN Foundation for many years. So. Is a very, very experienced hand in that area. So these are the kind of things we are doing. Uh, and we are, as we go on along, we will be, you know, letting you know about the program we are making. This is not going to be a talk shop. Uh, we will still uh, be following up with each and everybody there. And we want you to also spread the news, uh, introduce uh, contacts to us, introduce people to all that you think and do business with us in some of the areas that we have outlined, or even those that we have not mentioned there. So I thank you very much for the time. I know. Uh, it, I, it, I mean, 11 to 1 is a very, very uh, uh, busy time for top executives like you, but to give us two hours of your time shows the kind of interest you have in this, in this organization. And I promise that we will not uh, disappoint you. Thank you very much. So, GMB, can you please go ahead and do this? Thank you. Thank The word of thanks, please. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman and the distinguished personalities that have been on this uh, webinar today. Um, on behalf of the board of directors of Odua Investment, the management and the staff, uh, it's our pleasure to appreciate all the participants at today's webinar uh, who have not just listened to the presentation made by the senior partner of KPMG, Mr. Joseph Tegbe, uh, but also the contributions and uh, the new dawn program of Odua, as uh, Dr. Shegwa and all put across to us. Uh, we have taken on board the contributions which came from those who were privileged to talk to us, and also the comments that came through the chat room and the question and answer sessions. There are questions that we are unable to answer, which we want to apologize that we are constrained with time in this respect. But because it's recorded, we shall take this on board and make sure that as board and management, we give attention to them. Uh, on this note, I really want to sincerely thank our shareholders, uh, the six state governments and governors of the six Southwest states. And we are privileged that Governor Babajide Sonwolu was represented on this uh, call by Mrs. Sholakwe Amond. We want to thank her and thank His Excellency for the interest they have shown uh, in participating and giving us encouraging words during the course of this uh, webinar. We want to put on record the numerous people representing different sectors of the Nigerian industry and the quality of representation, including those in the academy. Uh, some of them have been acknowledged earlier on both academia, yeah. business, different sectors of the business sector, the stock exchange, banking, the legal. Uh, some of them have been acknowledged earlier on. But on this occasion, for those who were not chance to acknowledge in person, 
we really want to thank you for participating here. For those who have made the remarks, it's been very encouraging that you have been interested in this organization and uh, the thoughts you have put across and comments you have put across is being noted by the board and management in ensuring that it's not just starting, that should be just a focus, is sustaining it and making sure that we actualize the vision and the mission statement of the organization. The vision to be a world-class conglomerate and the mission to enhance value for all stakeholders and ensuring that we enhance this legacy for generations uh, on board. Just as we are privileged today to reminisce about the past, we want to see 25, 30 years, 50 years from now, where generations will be comparing us to, comparing Odua to Mudabala or Temasek of uh, Singapore. Uh, so we take um, your, we don't take for granted your participation at this webinar on a, on a busy Thursday, end of the month. We really appreciate you all most sincerely, all the panelists who have talked there. For Mr. Tegbe, who also have helped us in setting the tone, we want to thank him. We want to appreciate all and sundry who have stated out of interest in the development of Odua at this seminar. Finally, I will want to go on to thank members of the boards of our subsidiary companies and associate companies who have also joined us on this webinar, different uh, non-executive directors that represent Odua, these investing companies, which are either associate companies or directors. <laughs> on a final note, I want to thank members of the, the entire members of the board of Odua Investment for the support that management has received, you know, particularly in the last one month that they have been inaugurated in starting new territories and business ventures that Odua is going on. We are sure all of you stakeholders that the expectations is very, very high and we know it's challenging and we are appropriately re resourcing to make sure that we can meet this challenge. More importantly, we have the solid backing of all our shareholders and governors in this respect. And as the chairman earlier remarked, they are taking the back seat and align the board to actually take responsibility. So as we go ahead and we reach out on all the promises we are reaching, we are, we, we are having in terms of a collaboration and cooperation, we do hope that you will gladly extend it to us. I thank you most sincerely for joining us this afternoon. And uh, we look forward to reaching out and be able to make progress in delivering those huge expectations that you have all put across that Odua investment must deliver, not just for the Southwest, but for the glory of Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us today and do have a very pleasant uh, afternoon. God bless to everybody. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And we have come to the end of the session. Thank you very much for your patience. And for more information, you can visit Odua's website, www.odoainvestment.com.ng. The presentations shared today will be available. They'll be sent to your emails since you have registered and you can further engage Odua Investment Company Limited um, afterwards. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good afternoon and God bless you. Got in order for your side, and you want to find another way to prosper. You think say God in order. Oh, oh, oh.
Oh, wow. 